Hi, and thank you for joining me at the Things Conference. My name is Rob Cartwright, and my uh, presentation today is Making a Business from Law and Deployment. Uh, we are not focused on a specific um, vertical market or single product, but instead uh, we're focused on the law around technology itself uh, and deploying solutions horizontally across uh, many sectors and applications, uh, such as smart buildings, smart cities, agriculture, uh, tourism. Uh, I suggest if you are, um, uh, if you want to create a business around Laura One, then uh, I definitely suggest you engage with uh, the TTN, uh, Things Network, because they've got a massive resource of um, educational uh, training courses, uh, YouTube videos, and of course the, the, the Things Network uh, community network server. Uh, then really uh, it's down to getting experience, uh, experience of installing and um, doing uh, most of our work is external gateways. So uh, um, some are easy, some are easier than others. Uh, this is uh, this is reasonably straightforward uh, installation of a, uh, you can see an external gateway there on its own frame on a flat roof, uh, pretty much uh, you know, straightforward. Um, and some are more difficult. Uh, this is uh, an installation that I did. That's me up at a, a, a tall, narrow tower, tower, uh, and uh, you soon get to to realise you've got to take everything with you. Uh, you really don't want to go up and down. Um, so uh, once you've got that sort of experience, um, but really because they're, they're they're external, we do like to get our gateways uh, mounted high up, and uh, so a lot of the time we use access equipment. So as a as a commercial installer, if you you know if you're looking to this as a business, you've really got to understand the the, the costs involved in hiring uh, such equipment, uh, and then obviously you can pass that on to uh, as part of a project or direct to the to the client. Uh, you don't always have um, uh, buildings to attach to, or power, or internet. Uh, so you need to be creative. Uh, this is a solution, a solar PV powered solution that we did, um, where we've got enough. Uh, solar PV and battery storage to um, keep the gateway going 24 hours a day. Um, and again, you know, nice solutions that can be uh, can make or break a, a project for a client. You, um, as a as as the installer, as the person who's actually going to install this equipment, uh, you need to start doing site surveys. Uh, you can use tools like this: is simple uh, Google Earth or Google Maps. To, to look at distances between gateways and, and uh, potential device locations. Um, we use a, a software tool called CloudRF uh, to do the simulations. So what we've done here is uh, we, we place the antenna on a building, specific building of a client, uh, and we can map coverage. Then um, what we can do is we can move the, uh, we can move the antenna around and then see what um, see what sort of coverage we get. But uh, to be honest, the the, the absolute best uh, the best method really for, for mapping coverage is to go to site, uh, and then we use uh, TTM Mapper. So uh, with TTM Mapper, we can map a, a site out, find if there's any any dead spots, and then either uh, put uh, move the gateway and do it again, or we um, we can look at putting a second gateway in, and we do like to put um, more than one gateway for gives us uh, a bit of redundancy, uh, and also uh, helps with automatic data rate helps with uh, with, with battery life. So uh, where we can get two gateways, and we will. Uh, you then get onto um, sensor installation uh, experience, and uh, the one thing you, you you need to learn is obviously. Uh, adapting sensors, uh, making brackets to get them to, to fit them into place. This is one we did for an underground water storage solution where we're monitoring the distance down to the water level. Um, so it was like a, the first go at a bracket and then we made a, a, a better second like Mark II bracket where we could lift it out uh, for, for, for any servicing or if they wanted to get into the tank. So uh, you know you, you do get to to work these things out as a commercial installer. Uh, this one we're doing a, a, a float switch into a, a, a tall tank. 
Um, and then things like this where it's a, a water meter. Uh, again, a small bracket and uh, this water meter is about um, a mile away, a kilometre, more than a kilometre away from the the, the nearest gateway. Uh, it's underground, it's under a steel manhole cover. So you, you know, you're working uh, solutions out all the time. Um, one thing you will do is you'll build up a kit. Uh, you'll build up a kit of tools. Um, and you don't, obviously you don't want to carry everything. The very nature of LoRaWAN is long distance. Yeah? So you can be a long way from the gateway. You could be a long way from an office. You can be a long way from a car. Uh, for instance, this this water meter, uh, this was quite a long walk from the nearest road where we could the only place we could park the, the vehicle, and uh, we had to carry everything with it and you know to, to fit all that. So you do really hone down the, the amount of tools you need, uh, and that's for uh, you know setting up the provisioning the device or setting up the, the the meter readings, for instance, and cutting that into the into the pipe. You will uh, you'll you'll get yourself a, a set of tools for. LoRaWAN devices. Um, the reason I've shown you these pictures, uh, you know, close-ups of, of, of an installation is uh, really get into the habit. I really recommend get into the habit of, of taking step-by-step -step photographs of all the work that you do, of all these LoRaWAN installations. Um, and this is important as you build the team because as you build that team out, you can then uh, show them these step-by-step -step guides. Uh, and also, uh, you know, if there's any uh, any issues and things later you can uh, discuss them uh, with your team and you can see you know what other people have done on your behalf um, you can see a, a weather station installation all standalone there uh, and again you get the idea of you know what you're going to carry to to locate to the site um, record everything absolutely record everything now when uh, when I started uh, installing Loran devices you know for the first time you're just completely overwhelmed by the fact that it works. You know, you're you're a long way from your gateways. You're down in a pit, or you know, it, 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 you, you're so surprised that it actually works over these huge distances, um, and you you just leave the device. And I did this for for a long time, uh, and about three months later, uh, I realised that I had um, a, an issue with a with a device, or uh, battery life wasn't as expected. And what I realised there was actually I didn't have any, any, any records of what I did. So uh, record everything. And now we, we actually operate a, a sensor database. So we've got a, a device database. Uh, so every time we provision a device, we record all the settings, you know, data rates, even things like you know, what type of battery. So the, the, the make and model of the battery. So if we notice a pattern over a certain deployment of sensors, uh, it might point to that particular uh, brand or, or batch of batteries. Um, so do you know? Do record everything as you go through uh, a commercial installation. So as soon as we started doing uh, commercial installations and, and paid for services, we switched to uh, things uh, to TTN Enterprise to the V3 stack. Uh, and the reason we did that is actually um, we, there's a lot more information that you can get, you know, specific information, things like uh, you know join requests. Um, things like that. You, data rates, you really, you, it's, a, it's a much uh, better tool. Plus, we distinguish between our our paid clients uh, on TTN Enterprise and our community work with uh, with TTM. And it's also it's fair on it's fair on the things industries because after all they've they've helped you get started. Um, so uh, by switching to you know the, the paid for services, it's uh, it's really you know maintaining that whole uh, ecostructure really. You can start doing dashboards, uh, dashboards for clients, uh, so they can see their data. Um, but the real thing for, for us as a business is um, the service and maintenance contracts, uh, looking after networks on behalf of clients, because um, that's actually what we do. You know, we are we are providing a full uh, turnkey service with the networks. So this is our, our business model. Uh, we are a system integrator. Uh, we we have the LoRaWAN hardware sales. Uh, it's it's low margin on on hardware, but uh, but it tends to be high volume, especially with you know with sensor devices, not necessarily gateways, but sensors. Uh, the gateway installation charge, and you saw like with the, with the access equipment things like that. But we, we tend to just cover the cost there. Uh, provisioning 
this is where you add value. Uh, unlike a, a retailer who's just uh, selling a sensor, uh, we're actually provisioning the device on behalf of our client. We're provisioning it to the network, to the application. Uh, so that's added value, so that's a higher margin. Uh, the network maintenance is um, uh, where we've got the skills, we you know, a lot of skills in maintaining the network. So that's added value, higher margin. Uh, sensor adaptations, so we're doing bespoke solutions for a client uh, and bespoke is value added. And then you've got the data storage. Um, so data storage is super, super low margin, uh, but it is high, it's high volume and then it's ongoing. So you're talking, you know, three, four, five years of, uh, of, of turnover then. Um, one of the big, uh, one of the big or best um, uh, income for us really is the best business is collaboration. And it comes from collaborating with other service providers, especially niche software um, services in vertical markets uh, and such as agriculture. Yeah, uh, We are the, the, the hardware provider um, and we maintain a reliable LoRaWAN network for those uh, those businesses so they can focus on delivering their own solutions to their clients. Yeah, so we're the, the hardware provider to them and we maintain that work. And that's our that's our best business. That's where we've uh, you know made the biggest gains is in collaborating with with other partners such as that. And um, just quickly on a on a break even point of view, just so you know, uh, for the first twelve months we had to work out you know exactly. Uh, what we were doing, all the costs involved. Uh, it was quite painful, really, in some ways, about uh, you know uh, laying out costs or not realising to do certain things. We were testing a lot of hardware. We've tested like you know over twenty uh, different manufacturers of gateways, over a hundred um, different manufacturers of uh, sensor devices, and we've built that client base. But uh, the break-even point really came for us when we had about 40 gateways installed, about a thousand devices. Uh, so from that hardware sales, uh, the monthly subscriptions, uh, and then the actual contract to maintain those lower networks uh, as an integrator, system integrated business, that's actually where uh, you know, we sort of saw the, the break even. So really, um, LoRaWAN, big sm smiley face, and that's because uh, you know, we love LoRaWAN, we really do as a technology, uh, the fact that, you know, we're, we're always surprised at some of the distances we get. And it puts a smile on our client's face as well. When we're doing collaborations with people and we deploy the, the, the networks and we deploy the sensors, you know, it's, 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 it's astonishing really is you know, what you can achieve with, with LoRaWAN. So it's, uh, you know, it's a good business to be in. Uh, so really, um, it's... Short and sweet, if you've got any questions uh, or any queries on, you know, uh, thinking of starting a business in LoRaWAN, thinking of uh, doing that uh, system integration or, uh, you know, being the, what we call the coal face uh, installer, the people actually on the ground doing installations, then you can find me on LinkedIn uh, and you can ask any, any questions. Okay, thank you and enjoy the Things Conference.